this video we're going to talk about today is from a channel called Turf Mechanic. Now, I, if I'm not mistaken, I've, I've used this uh, uh, a video of this gentleman in defense of him, actually. I mean, there were some rude comments made about him, and um, I, don't, I don't condone that. But what I do condone is a, a, a very aggressive and assertive criticism of claims. And in this video, he has a lot of claims that are complete nonsense. So let's listen to the video. I'm going to stop it. I'm going to play it for the length of time without interrupting it, because otherwise I'll never get through here. I'll be here for three hours talking about this. So I'm just going to play it and then stop it at the timestamp and then I'll comment. Okay, here we go. So just for those listening, it's a gentleman sitting out in his front or back lawn. I don't know where he is, but he's got a mountains in the background. It looks gorgeous. He's got a fenced in backyard with beautiful mountains and blue sky in the background. He's got a male organite and ammonium sulfate and he's sitting on a chair in his back lawn talking to the video. And here we go. If you fertilize your lawn with malorganite throughout the growing season, there's a really good chance that you're putting the wrong amount down. Let's talk about it here for the next few minutes. I'm going to use ammonium sulfate, a popular synthetic fertilizer, as a way to illustrate the problem. I don't want to waste your time, so I'm going to say right off the bat that people are generally not putting enough morganite down at a time and or they're putting it down too frequently. You're making the job harder on yourself. Now we okay, so his introduction is, you know, you're not putting male organite down at the right rate, basically. And again, just in case there's anybody on YouTube, I'm not recommending any of this, any of this stuff this guy says, okay? <laughs> right? Just so you know. I'm not, he's, he's, going to ask, he's going to recommend ignoring the label and applying this product despite what the label says, basically. Now, in some states with fertilizer, you know, perhaps that's legal. I don't know. I know it's completely illegal with pesticides in every state. You can't do that. With fertilizers, it's a little more gray. But in general, I don't recommend ignoring any label on a fertilizer or, or certainly not a pesticide. He's not saying on a pesticide. He's not saying that. But on this fertilizer, he's going to tell you to ignore the labeled rate. and go at an uh, go you can go at a lower rate but he's t he's going to tell you to go at a much higher rate okay i'm not saying that so don't <laughs> you know i'm just critiquing it so i'm going to skip ahead to let's see 159 i'm going to skip ahead to 159 and we're going to so he's he's again he's going to talk about morganite and uh you're not applying at the right rate, basically. And he's going to compare it to ammonium sulfate, more or less. Here we go. Next, next section. What does all that mean? To explain, I'm going to explain a little bit about ammonium sulfate. This is a product that I pretty much never use in the lawn, but I do know quite a bit about it. Ammonium sulfate. So he says uh, he knows quite a bit about that. And that reminded me of it's, this when, an audio, when the audio switches, it's probably because I'm switching scenes here. Who knows what's going on? But that rem reminded me that he, um, this guy, I was watching a video and I, and I went back to try to find the video because I couldn't believe, I was, I was laughing so hard because this, the guy, and it was this gentleman, I'm almost 100% sure that it was this gentleman. It said, um, perhaps I know too much about turf grass. He was talking about some video and he goes, well, you know, what can I say? Perhaps I know too much about turf grass. And then he said right here, that, that's what reminded me of it. He goes, what did he say? He goes, I know, he knows quite a bit about ammonium sulfate. That's what reminded me about it. So I was, that's, thank, I'm glad I, I watched this. I'm glad I chose this video. I didn't catch that the first time. Eventually I'll show that video if I can ever find it. Now I know the channel. I'll go back and I'll look for his video. Are you saying he knows too much about turf grass? I, I'm, I'm uh, privileged to be a, a, so around, um, I'll leave the names out of it, be around many, many in, intelligent people, not just in, in academia, um, but in business, in the industry, um, you know, uh, operating lawn care companies, golf course, saw, saw producers. I'm around a lot of people that are very successful and very knowledgeable. I have never seen any of them ever say they know too much about turf grass. <laughs> That's the funniest thing I've ever heard. It, it, it seems it, it, there's a there's a 
what is the saying? The more the more you you say, the less you know, or something like that. The more you talk about, it, the less you know, or whatever the case is. And it's it's the Dunning Kruger effect. The more the you learn a little bit, you gain a little bit of competency, and your confidence goes sky high. And that's what reminded me. Uh, that's what he says when that's what he when he says that it reminds me of the Dunning Kruger um, peak there, where you gain a little bit of competency, and um, and your your confidence goes sky high. And that happens with everybody. No, no one's immune to it. You know, you learn a little bit about you know, weed eating or taking part of carburetor or whatever the case is. And you think you know everything about it. You know, it's very common for that to occur. And it's only after you've been, you know, exposed to it for a long time, you start to gain more, um, competency on it that you realize your confidence is way too high. You need to lower your confidence level a little bit, but that's, yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to stop it. I said I wasn't going to stop it, but that's what I suddenly remind that suddenly reminded me that that's, (laughs) this is the guy (laughs) that's funny. All right, back to it. If you have any more, if I have any problems with the audio, please let me know. Thank you, guys. Ammonium sulfate in its purest form, which is what you see here, is a 2100 product. It's a purely synthetic fertilizer, and yes, if I put it on the lawn, it would make everything green. This is high on the salt index, so it is always a risk of burning your lawn. Malorganite is enormously low on the salt index, so it's almost impossible to burn your lawn with it. When you put ammonium sulfate down on the lawn, it is all, 100% of it, water soluble, so it becomes available instantly. So, so long as the root systems of your grass are not dormant, what you see behind me here is a very early season lawn. Coming out of winter, things are waking up. The root systems are not dormant, and the grass is just barely starting to grow. If I were to put this product on the lawn, it would start growing and within four to six weeks, it would be done. All of it would be used up, and I would have to apply it again if I wanted another push of growth. I I said I wasn't gonna stop it. I'm gonna just spin right there. Just make sure we're clear is that he's saying four to six weeks, you apply the ammonium sulfate, it's gonna be done in four to six weeks. Keep keep an eye on the the length of time that he's talking about on some of these products, and and I'll come back to it in, um, in a minute. Ballpark rule of thumb is if you're putting three quarters of a pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet of ammonium sulfate on your lawn, you're going to have to do it again after six weeks or about 45 days, unless you just want to go into a stabilization period where you're not fertilizing at all. If, however, you were to put the same amount of fertilizer on the lawn using malorganite, it would continue working for an additional 25 days up to about 10 weeks. That means that all of the growth that you get out of this fertilizer is used up and this still has a month to go, which means- Yeah, again, I'm sorry, I can't can't keep, I gotta gotta stop it sometimes. About to lose my mind here. Keep in mind, that's what he said. So, you know, it's gonna stop and the milorganite's gonna have another month to grow or whatever. If you use ammonium sulfate, the growth is gonna eventually peter out. And then because you use malorganite or a slow release material like this, then it's going to continue to grow for another month. Just keep in mind, don't forget these numbers. Okay, guys. It's not using the amount of fertilizer that this does within those first six weeks. If you want to have stable growth relative to this, you're going to be able to put down a higher dose of this than the bag rate indicates. Most people don't really want to go out and... Okay, just so we're clear, I said it when I started, I'm not recommending this. I'm not recommending ignoring any label on any product that you put in our environment. Okay, so just we're clear for all the YouTube people out there to not, to not do something to my channel. I am not promoting this misinformation or um, potential, potential uh, ac- actions that are illegal. You know, I'm not. In most cases, you can do some things with fertilizers that are different than pesticides. But when it comes to labeled rates with fertilizers, with pesticides for sure, that's obvious. We have NIFRA to to cover us on that. We have to do that. The labels the law. With fertilizers, it's slightly gray. But I'm not saying do this. Just so we're clear. All right. Fertilize their lawn ten times a year or five times a year. Four times a year is pretty normal. Mid spring going into summer, at the end of summer, and then early November as a winterization application that the lawn can then use in the following growing season. Now, we'd already talked about um, 
fall fertilization, and he just said you can put it down in November for fertiliz- for grass to use up or for fertilization to be used in the fall and growing season. And we made it very clear for a month I went over this stuff. Well, my, longer, whatever. You can go back and look at the playlist where it talks about fall fertilization, fall fertility. And episode after episode, paper after paper after paper says the same thing. And that is, you want to go, if you're going to do the fall fertilization, which is, which is important, you want to go out early, September, you know, it depends on where you're at, but you know, you want to go out well before the grass starts to slow down. In my area, it's September in Kentucky. As you move north, it might be, you know, earlier than that. If you go south, it might be later than that. But, you know, well before it goes, it starts to slow down. You want to you have that application down on the ground, primarily of soluble nitrogen, okay? And the closer and closer you get to that grass slowing down, you want to back way off on the nitrogen to the point where you don't really want to consider applying any nitrogen in the late, late fall, early winter. That's not only due to the lack of, not a lack of response, but a reduced response when the grass is already down, but also to the environmental risk that can occur. And we showed papers on that. Go back and look at all the papers that I've gone over. So this idea that you want to go down in November with this fertilization and to leave it in the soil so that it can be taken back up in the spring, the, 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 spring, the, the, fall applica- the late fall, the ones that we don't want to do will actually a, a result most likely in turf grass greening in the spring. That's not, that will happen. The point is, your environmental risk goes through the roof, and it doesn't. And it's not necessary because you can simply avoid that late fall, early winter application, avoid all that environmental risk during the winter, and then go out in the early spring with a application of nitrogen. Then, and he's saying to do. And he's basically saying to do what's opposite of the of the evidence, which drives me nuts. Goofballs like this are on YouTube, and scientists are struggling to trying to keep up with these clowns. Sorry, shouldn't say that. I apologize. It's just fr- very frustrating for me. I spent my entire career doing this stuff to help people, and then someone does this and sets us back. It's crazy. Skipping forward to four four fifty nine. All right, last bit, and then we're done. Makes some sense. Point is, if you take the bag rate and multiply it by one point five five, and then apply it four times throughout the year, it's the same amount of nitrogen as you're putting on the lawn with this product, except for you're only applying it four times throughout the year. Now, I'm not an advocate for putting melorganite down as your only fertilizer four times a year, but I do know that a lot of people are. So if you fall into that camp, make sure that you're putting enough down. Make sure that you are adjusting for the slowness factor of this being used in the lawn. Here in my lawn, in my yard, and here on this channel, I do like to advise people, and I do it myself, to put melorganite down in the spring. This is my product of choice in the spring. Spring is a natural root development period of the year for grasses of all kinds. And because this has so much phosphorus in it, it's gonna allow the grass to be able to put on those roots that it wants to naturally. But I'm not an advocate for putting down too much phosphorus. Well, what's your definition of too much phosphorus? My definition is the application of any phosphorus to a turf grass that's not deficient in phosphorus. That's my definition. So if you're not a fan of putting down too much phosphorus, stop applying it completely unless you have a turf grass deficiency in phosphorus. You can kind of get a rough idea what that, you know, your risk from a soil test, you can kind of get a rough idea. But unless your turf grass is exhibiting phosphorus deficiency, applying any phosphorus is too much. Tired of this nonsense. It's ridiculous. I'm going to have to take a break, get my blood pressure back down. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's absurd. If you see a phosphorus deficiency in your turf grass, which I doubt many people have ever actually seen that, to be frank. But if you do, it's very easily diagnosed, very obvious what it is, and it's even more easy to remedy. It doesn't take that long. You go out and spread out a little bit of pea. You can even spray out some phosphorus, and the turf grass responds very rapidly. Within a week or two, it'll pop right back out and it'll look like nothing ever happened. So these con- this concept or this this ongoing you know management practice 
where we're just applying natural organics willy nilly and saying, I'm, 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 I don't mind, you know, I don't mind applying, I don't want to apply too much phosphorus. This, this has phosphorus in it, so I'm going to apply it because the spring was where we need a lot of root growth, all this stuff. This ongoing nonsense. These, we need to cut the stuff off, guys. This is absolutely ridiculous. Don't sit here and tell me that you're being, you're being you know, thoughtful of the, the environment because you're using natural organics and you're spreading this stuff out when you don't have a phosphorus deficiency. You might think that. You might believe that. But I can assure you that's not the case. If you're putting out phosphorus in any situation where your turf grass is not deficient in phosphorus, you are contributing to the problem. So knock it off. I've got 20 seconds left. And I don't think I'm even going to make it through these next 20 seconds. Over the course of a season. That's why I only put this down in the spring. But when I put this down in the spring, I take the bag rate and I round it up. Mathematically speaking, we're talking one time, 1.55 times the bag rate because it's going to last for 10 weeks instead of six weeks. So that's what he's, and that's it. That's all I got. He's saying to ignore the label. He's telling you to apply it at one and a half times the labeled rate for some sort of perceived extended release. Don't do it. Don't, you know. The best advice I can tell you is that if you have questions about stuff like this, go look up the, 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 your local land grant institution's extension website or call a professor. Ask them what they recommend. They're going to have best management practice manuals. And nowhere in any of those manuals is it going to say ignore the fertilizer label and put it out at 1.55 times the rate. And nowhere in there is it going to say apply phosphorus even if your turf grass is perfectly fine with phosphorus. Okay. So... These, you know, I'm using YouTube, you know, <laughs> for, for communication of information as well. But the majority of this stuff on YouTube is complete nonsense. And, and you really can't rely upon it. You, you almost have to assume that it's just inaccurate from the beginning until, you, until otherwise proven different. So, it, you know, take it for what it's worth. Don't do this. Don't exceed the labeled rate unless you have a very good reason okay and i, I wouldn't even do it then i mean I, I i will do certain things under the premises of the research i'm conducting research so we do some crazy things but the reason we do those crazy things is because then we can we can refine that rate back down to a known limit to a safe limit but we not we got to know the points above that safe limit so that we can do a regression and determine what is the safe limit so in research we'll do these things but in practice and application, I do not recommend ignoring any label and just doing whatever you think you should do. Okay. And I definitely don't recommend doing it and putting it on YouTube and telling everybody you're doing it.